Welcome to session five. This session will focus on steps four and five of the updated Ohio improvement process and the roles the DLT, BLT or CSLT and TBTs play throughout the process. Let's take a look at our objectives for today's session. In today's session, we will develop an understanding of steps four and five in the Ohio improvement process, consider various resources and how they might be used, and determine the next right steps for an implementation timeline. This graphic should look familiar to you if you've joined us in our internal facilitators training or by watching our previous webinars. As you may remember, the Ohio improvement process is a systems framework to assist districts or buildings and teacher teams as they examine data and determine next steps to address concerns at the district, building, and teacher team levels. This framework allows the opportunity for all teams to provide feedback and communicate with other stakeholders in the process. The OIP includes, but goes well beyond, the tr traditional plan, do, study, act cycle. When viewed as an organizational strategy, rather than an exercise in compliance, the Ohio improvement process gives districts a template through which focused and intentional action can take place. It brings educators together through collaborative team structures to learn from each other, and it facilitates communication and decision-making between and across levels of the system, such as district, central office, school, grade levels, content areas, and classrooms. The team structures at the core of the OIP form peer-to-peer -peer networks, giving more people a voice and allowing for the inclusion of multiple perspectives in guiding each district's journey toward organizational learning and continuous improvement. You may remember at the center of the Ohio improvement process is supporting implementation. It plays a significant role throughout the process. Supporting implementation is our foundation of the structure. Leaders in the district can ensure successful outcomes with the proper structures in place. Step one in the Ohio improvement process is to identify critical needs. Let's review step one. The DLT will analyze data and prioritize needs based on various types of data, which may include adult data, student data, organizational data, and community data. The DLT will prioritize needs based on utilizing protocols, inventories, or surveys. The DLT, BLT or CSLT, and TBTs play crucial roles in identifying critical needs at their level. Let's move on to step two, research and select evidence-based strategies. As a reminder, when you consider evidence-based strategies, you need to select strategies that address the prioritized critical needs from step one. Considerations include current research, S's levels of evidence, and strategy review. All levels of the organization, the DLT, BLT or CSLT and TBTs play crucial roles in researching and selecting evidence-based strategies. Step three in the Ohio improvement process is the plan for implementation. When thinking about step three, at the DLT level, you will focus on the district level plan. As a reminder, your plan must be aligned to critical needs with a limited number of SMART goals and evidence-based strategies, a clear plan for monitoring progress of the plan, and action steps that will be implemented with fidelity. Additionally, the DLT will consider ongoing professional learning, human capital allocation, fiscal resources, and outlined roles of the system. At the BLT or CSLT level, the team will set the course for the plan at the building level and the implementation of the adult practices or evidence-based strategies. Building and community school level teams should consider the following questions. What are the expectations for the TBTs? What will success look like for adult implementation and student performance? And if implemented with fidelity, what will be the impact for all students and specific subgroups of students? The BLT or CSLT will also be responsible to share with all of the TBTs which adult practices in the building 
are having a positive impact on student learning and strive to develop a plan which will replicate effective practices throughout the building. At the TBT level, teams will determine the expectations for all adults when implementing the selected strategy, including the specific steps in the process. You may remember this analogy from our previous session. The work of the DLT, BLT or CSLT, and TBT could be compared to a theater. The DLT should have the perspective of the entire theater or the district, not one section or one row, but an overarching view. The BLT or CSLT will focus on just one section of the theater or individual building, the one that impacts their work and addresses the unique perspectives of their work. The TBT will focus on just their row or teacher team in the theater. They pay attention to the work and needs of their section, but pay specific attention to the needs of their row. Each team has their specific role for each step in the Ohio improvement process. Please refer to our previous webinar for a more in-depth look at the roles of each team in steps one, two, and three. Let's move on to step four, which is to implement and monitor. In the past, one of the greatest challenges with school improvement was in the area of implementation. When you think about implementation, it requires changes in adult behaviors and practices. Implementation is the main focus of the DLT, BLT or CSLT, and TBTs. Also included within step four is the role of monitoring. Monitoring is collaborative learning through observing implementation of adult practices and their impact on student outcomes. In monitoring, we are ensuring what we have agreed to implement is happening as intended to maximize student outcomes. How do you ensure that monitoring is occurring consistently with fidelity? We inspect what we expect because we respect the work that we're doing. At this time, Pause the webinar and consider how well your district or building have monitored the adult actions in the past. As we look at implementation and monitoring, here are some questions to consider. How do we inform our implementation efforts? How do we monitor adult and student indicators to measure progress of selected strategies? If the strategy is not having the intended impact, what corrections are needed? The DLT, BLT, and TBTs have crucial specific roles in measuring the plan implementation and monitoring adult practices and student impact. As you remember, in step three, you developed a plan for implementation. Part of that plan included how your team will monitor the implementation. Take a look back at your step three and review or revise your plan to ensure that you have developed a plan for implementation and monitoring of the adult actions, which is your cause data, and the impact on your student performance, which is your effect data. Let's take a closer look at the similarities and differences between the DLT, BLT or CSLT, and TBTs as we look at the specific roles for each team within this framework. Notice the teams at all levels are responsible for measuring plan implementation and its impact based on adult and student indicator data. Both the DLT and BLT or CSLT will monitor by observing adult practices and analyzing student impact to decide and or determine if more district or building supports are needed. TBTs will monitor student mastery of learning standards through the use of formative assessments while determining if the adult actions made the expected impact. From the DLT, BLT, or CSLT, and TBT level, there are various considerations when discussing implementation. Collecting ongoing adult and student data and analyzing it in a rapid cycle gives implementers immediate feedback for course corrections and informs implementation and monitoring efforts. Starting at the TBT level, 
Teams may be focusing on a specific skill, strategy, or standard. Do students st struggle with a specific skill? The TBT may decide to select an evidence-based strategy that directly impacts the deficit area. The TBT cycle may be a short period of time, such as a week or two weeks, to measure the effectiveness of the adult actions on the student performance. Perhaps the TBT decides to focus on a specific standard that will be heavily assessed. The time frame may be shorter or longer depending upon the depth and rigor of the standard and the complexity of the selected strategy. At the BLT or CSLT level, the team may be monitoring the impact of building-wide selected strategies, such as classroom discussion or non-linguistic representations. The team may also be monitoring the fidelity of the building-wide curriculum or an initiative, such as writing across the curriculum, a focus on Tier 2 vocabulary, or PBIS, to determine the level of implementation and effect on student performance. The building-wide implementation and monitoring may occur on a regular basis throughout the year to ensure that implementation is ongoing and consistent with building expectations. At the DLT level, the team may be analyzing information from the BLT on the effectiveness of the feedback based on rapid cycle formative assessments and adjustments. A rapid cycle of data analysis, such as formative assessments, measures the effectiveness of a strategy more quickly than a traditional assessment, such as a unit test or a quarterly assessment. This, this gives program implementers ongoing feedback to support continuous quality improvement. Once again, during step three, plan for impl implementation, the district building and teacher-based teams created adult and student indicators to monitor progress of selected evidence-based strategies. Teams and or individuals collected implementation evidence that shows the level of impact. Data collection and analysis allows adults to make course corrections based on evidence. Implementers should base course corrections on all evidence and whether the strategy is having the intended impact. If the strategy is not having the intended impact, corrections could include additional training, coaching, or resources based on the identified need. Note that the corrections previously stated include changing the actions of the adults or your cause data. As you consider implementation and monitoring, what do you anticipate to be your greatest challenge or concern? How might you address this challenge? These are some additional questions for you to consider. Did we do what we said we were going to do? Did we monitor it? What was the impact on student performance? Pause the webinar now and discuss these questions with your team. Step five in the Ohio improvement process is examine, reflect, and adjust. One change in the process is the emphasis of not just examining, but now also reflecting and adjusting. When examining, reflecting, and adjusting, all teams should ask, where did we start? Where are we now? And where do we go to next? Teams should examine and reflect on goal achievement, implementation, and communication. And teams could adjust by identifying next steps. The DLT, BLT, or CSLT, and TBTs have crucial roles in determining if the implemented strategies had the expected outcomes at each level. Remember from the balcony view, the DLT determines if the implemented evidence-based strategies had the expected district outcomes. The DLT should examine and evaluate implementation of adult practices or your cause data and their impact on student performance, the effect data. Reflect on successes to replicate and practices to improve and adjust as needed. Some questions the DLT may ask could be, when do we adjust and for how long and are we on the right course? Remember from the view of the BLT, 
or the section in the theater, the BLT determines if the implemented evidence-based strategies have the expected building outcomes. By examining and evaluating the implementation of adult practices and their impact on student performance, by reflecting on successes to replicate and practices to improve, and by adjusting as needed. As a BLT, you may need to consider the following questions. When reviewing our student performance or effect data, where do we see significant improvement within the building? How can we replicate the successes throughout the building? When reviewing our student performance or our effect data, where do we see areas of concern? And what support could the BLT provide to ensure that improvement occurs? What adult actions or evidence-based strategies do we want to replicate throughout the building? And how will we monitor the implementation of the adult actions to increase student performance building-wide? When looking at this from the TBT view or a row in the theater, TBTs determine if implemented evidence-based strategies had the expected team outcomes. TBTs should examine and evaluate implementation of adult practices or cause data and their impact on student performance, affect data, reflect on successes to replicate and practices to improve, and adjust as needed. Sound familiar? Each level has the same expectations. The difference is the lens from which they observe the theater. Questions for the TBT to consider include, what changes based on the adult actions occurred for the team and our students? What was the impact? If nothing changed, why did we not make course corrections? What are we going to do differently, or maybe the same as we move forward? And if we saw significant impact, how will we continue the practice to ensure repeated outcomes. During the planning process, teams created SMART goals, which will be used to collect evidence to determine if goals were met, exceeded, or not met. Teams examine and reflect on how well the student progress data predicted the summative data. The rapid cycle formative assessments should provide enough evidence that the summative data isn't a surprise. Based on the rapid cycle formative assessments, you should be able to predict how well the students will perform. Through thorough implementation occurs when the set of actions and strategies are implemented as designed with accuracy and consistency. When examining, evaluating, and reflecting, ask the following questions. Are strategies being implemented as intended? Are critical actions or tasks missing? Are all buildings consistently implementing action steps? And are there sufficient resources to support implementation such as human, financial, material, and technical? When evaluating and reflecting on implementation, here are some additional questions to consider. Why was implementation fully, partially, or not successful? Has the strategy had enough time or support for implementation to have an impact? Are the actions occurring as planned? For example, are timelines being met and are resources available and in use? Is the timeline for adult implementation and student performance indicators realistic and attainable? And was the strategy the correct strategy to reach the goal. At this time, please pause the webinar and reflect on the questions with your team. Let's look at some recommendations for future plan improvements. Based on the team's examination, evaluation, and reflection of goals and implementation, the team recommends continuing modifying or eliminating practices. This could include changes to progress monitoring tools, professional learning, resource allocation, and human capital management. 
If analysis shows that implementation was not systemic across the district or the school, the team must identify gaps and include in the plan action steps to ensure effective implementation. If the practices are meeting or exceeding expectations, the organization should continue them and expand the plan to include additional classrooms or schools. And organizations modify or eliminate strategies when they confirm the strategies were fully implemented as intended, yet expected improvements did not occur. Teams also should consider eliminating a strategy when the resources or efforts needed for full implementation exceed the benefit received. Here are additional questions for you to consider with your team. Have you ever looked at a practice and decided that it needed to be eliminated? How long do you look at something before deciding it should be eliminated? And how do you communicate with stakeholders that practices have been eliminated modified or if they will be continued. At this time, you may again wish to pause the webinar to discuss these questions with your team. As you begin to develop or continue the collaborative structures in your district or community school, your teams may be looking for various resources or tools to guide their conversations. The use of protocols, or norms and roles can assist in guiding discussions for each team as it is imperative to shift discussions from compliance to coaching for improvement. In closing, please join us for an, our upcoming face-to-face -face session on June 4th at the Summit ESC for a full day session on leading and supporting the DLT, BLT, or CSLT and TBTs. Registration is available at www.sst8.org and we hope to see you there. In conclusion, please note that all changes could be subject to further updates pending ODE's suggestions. Thank you for listening and good luck with your Ohio improvement process.